Okay. And so, Michael Fuller. Right. So you thought what we said about David White is false? Well, that's 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 not the only thing. What I'm seeing is a general uh, uh, denial of the very first article of the creed, credo in Deum omnipotentum. And uh, I just don't understand it. Let me explain, please. Uh, you stated in an article entitled, St. Alphonsus rejected the idea of salvation for the invincibly ignorant, right? You, you wrote that article? Yeah. Okay. And then you mentioned, um, well, St. Alphonsus and St. Thomas, they did hold to, a, as you said, erroneous view of uh, baptism of blood and desire, that it was only for those who, who had belief in the Trinity. Is that correct? Yes. That's okay. correct. And then, so, so to some degree, you did, you did admit that St. Alphonsus and St. Thomas held some sort of concept of, of invincible ignorance. But no, they didn't hold invincible of... ignorance. Invincible ignorance, as it's commonly used, refers to the position that people who don't even believe in Jesus Christ, who are members of false religions, who don't have faith in the essential mysteries of the Trinity and the Incarnation, can be saved. No saint ever held that. Okay. That idea oh, is okay. contrary okay. to the Athanasian Creed. And by the way, it's obvious you're not familiar with the material we've put out because we've done many different things in which we specifically address these at matters in detail. For instance, we recently posted a video called Baptism of Desire Buried where there's a whole detailed section on St. Alphonsus's views. You really should watch it. Okay. And but, so, but, but what I wanted so, to talk to you about because that was the, uh, the purpose of the call and what you emailed us about was your claim that we misrepresented David White by saying that he believes atheists can be saved, when that is absolutely what he holds. No, he did not. He did not answer the question. He, he did right. Not, how, and, how did, okay, did just so question. people understand that David White was on a radio interview with the atheist Christopher Hitchens, and the host asked David White whether Hitchens can get to heaven if he dies in the state of atheism, and White said, "I don't know. I leave that up to God." That is equivalent. You're not quoting him. You're saying that that was the general idea conveyed. No, I have exactly what he said. The, the, what, 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 what were his exact words? That's the question. His exact words were, in response to this question, the question was, quote, what is going to happen to Hitchens when he dies if he stays in the state of atheism that he's in? Direct question. Answer, White, I have no business making any pronouncements whatsoever upon what happens to any individual soul at the time of death. That is heresy. When you are asked a direct question, when you are asked a direct question about the faith, you have to answer with what the church teaches. If you say I don't know, that is equivalent to denying what the church teaches. And I gave you the example in the email. If someone is asked, "Is Jesus Christ God?" and you say, "I have no business," making any pronouncements on that matter. That is equivalent to denying that Jesus Christ is God. The only acceptable Catholic answer is yes. In the same way, if someone asks you, can someone who dies in the state of atheism be saved? The only way you can answer that is no, he can't. Okay, okay, okay. Well, by saying that, that he by saying I, that he has yeah. no business making any pronouncements, that is to doubt or deny the truth. And is absolutely I, because he believes atheists can be saved. Can I respond to your question? Go ahead. First, off, first, first off, Dr. White did never. He never said that he believed that atheists could be saved. That's being taken entirely out of context. He he no, didn't so use he, those words. He doesn't it, have to. It, he doesn't okay, have to. Okay, he indicated okay, that by okay. by failing to say that they can't be saved when directly asked about that, he is saying that to to say otherwise is to be utterly dishonest. He, no. He, yes. He, here's one explanation. Now, neither one of us know exactly what Dr. White was thinking. Agreed? No, I do I mean, know what he was thinking, because his okay, actions okay, okay. and his words... You, you, his you act, mind now. His actions and his words manifest what he's thinking. This, 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 I just want to quote from the uh, from the Summa Theologica, which, of course, you, you claim contains errors. We're talking about one of the greatest doctors of the Catholic Church. The Summa Theologica was put 
on the altar beside the gospel at the Council of Trent. You you do believe in the Council of Trent, is that correct? Yeah, you don't believe in the Council you of Trent. Do? Okay, so this is what the, one of the greatest doctors of the church said I, 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 regarding, regarding invincible ignorance. This is, this he is didn't believe in invincible ignorance. This, this, okay. You don't have any idea what you're talking about, sir. I, None. I, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that... You don't have any clue. You don't have any I'm idea what you're trying, talking about. I'm simply, I'm simply trying to quote St. Thomas. Okay, go ahead. It, it, go ahead. Okay. Their inculpable ignorance will not save them, but if they fear God and live up to their conscience... God, in his infinite mercy, will furnish them with the necessary means of salvation. And then he goes on to give an example, the example of the angel. And then he says, rather than let them perish through inculpable ignorance. Being the person, being an atheist, okay, it's supposed that, that God does send them an angel, and they're dying, dying breath, and they accept the Catholic faith because they live just. How, how, if St. Thomas Aquinas is talking, of course he was thinking of, of, of the omnipotence of God, that God can do everything. Well, and, let me just cut you off here because say, you're no, you're mixing all kinds about. of issues here. Let me let me respond to what you said. Saint Thomas yeah. Aquinas held that someone who's ignorant of the gospel, who's of goodwill, will be brought to the essential knowledge of the mysteries of the Trinity and the Incarnation. He held that no one can be saved without faith in the Trinity and the Incarnation. That's what he taught. He specifically addressed that topic. He did not believe that people who are ignorant of those mysteries of the faith can be saved. To say otherwise is completely untrue. And we have he's his quotes. God, we God have his quotes. Them, he just send them an angel, and I'm saying that right. And, and that has that nothing to do with what we're talking you're about at all, because White was asked, let me finish, White was asked the question about someone who dies in the state of atheism. Okay? He said that someone who dies in the state of atheism, he doesn't know what's going to happen. He has no business making any judgment in that regard. That is heresy. The church has already made the judgment. The church has declared, based on divine revelation, that someone who dies in that state is lost. He does not profess what the church professes. You must believe and profess what the church professes. That is heresy. And actually, by defending it, you commit mortal sin. You commit mortal sin. Yes. Okay, no, but there's no. And you also committed mortal sin by falsely saying that we misrepresented him, when actually he... It must be committed with full knowledge in order to be a mortal sin. These are the basics of moral theology. You don't know anything about moral theology. Nothing. You don't know one thing. Nothing. Not even one thing, Nothing. no. Not, not even one thing. Not one. I know that for a sin to be committed, it has to have full knowledge. And that's just as just as St. Paul says in First Timothy. Are you denying he, that he says, mortal sin you have to have full knowledge? He has full knowledge because he's teaching no, something you're contrary. Now you're accusing me of moral sin. Are you, you are guilty of mortal sin, that's right. Because you, with full knowledge, with the evidence before you, with what White said, you said that it's a misrepresentation to teach that he was indicating atheists can be saved. When any honest person knows that's exactly what he was indicating. When he's directly asked a question, when he's directly asked a question, whether someone who dies in the state of atheism can be saved, and he doesn't say no, he's denying Catholic teaching on that issue, period. Any honest no, person can say that. He doesn't want to answer it because obviously he does believe atheists are going to hell. That's the obvious answer. That's the obvious Catholic deduction. Other than somebody so what you're saying is that he well. believes something and he didn't say what he believes. So what you're, I, you're actually saying is I, that he believes something... No, please don't form my statements for me. What I am saying is that I believe that Dr. White could have become, yes, he could have said, well, if he dies as an atheist, he will go to hell. He could have answered the No, he, he had to answer he that way. He had to answer yeah, that yeah, way. He ha- I agree, I agree. Is heresy manifested by omission? Is it a mortal sin without full knowledge? You're not even answering my question because you know you don't have the true position. Is no, heresy manifested by omission? Is heresy manifested? Of course it is. Right. And so, just like the Arians, when they would not condemn things that church leaders would ask them to condemn, just to make it clear that they're not holding some Arian heresy. Their failure to answer, let me finish, their failure to answer, or their failure to profess, their omission was a signification that they held something. In the same way, when you're asked a direct question, are all who die as non-Catholics lost? Or is this individual who's clearly a non-Catholic in a state of damnation? And you don't answer the question. You say, I can't judge. That is heresy by omission. 
All right, that's exactly what he did. How about this? Is Mr. Is, is Dr. David Allen White going to hell? He's on the road to hell. That's the question. Absolutely, hell. without question. Without question. There's no doubt about it. And well, see, you hold the heresy that no one can be judged of anything. You don't have the faith, and you don't understand the faith. Just as no, just as Polycarp said to the just to give you an example, Saint Polycarp said to the heretic Marcion, "I know you as the firstborn of Satan." He didn't say, "Well, I can't look into your heart. I just think you know what you're doing is maybe not right." No, he said, "I know you as the firstborn of Satan," because he had the conviction that someone who is clearly opposing the teaching of the church is not of God. To say that someone and that's can clearly what's that? That's a dogma that that people can can that if you deny that people can judge people, that's de- denying a Catholic dogma. To it's denying a Catholic it's, dogma. I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying. If you let me answer your question, or is, or, is it, or is it a theological opinion? It's a Catholic dogma that you must hold as outside of communion those who dissent from the rule of faith, and so it's a dogmatic fact that individuals who clearly dissent from Catholic teaching are outside the church. And so you are okay. you are indirectly denying the dogma. You are by extension denying the dogma. When you affirm that people who hold that atheists can be saved are not committing heresy. Well, then did, did St. Thomas, you, you say you admit, you admit that he held this, that not only St. Thomas and St. Alphonsus held the erroneous view of baptism of blood and desire for people regarding the Trinity. So right. only people re- so only people regarding the Trinity can accept errors and be saved according to, as you say, quote unquote erroneous views of Saint Thomas, Alphonsus and Saint and Saint Thomas and That's why you would that's why you would benefit if you would watch some of the presentations we've done on this issue because we cover this yeah, in detail. But, but, if you uh, let me finish, you ask me a question, you don't let me finish. The, the answer is that people can be erring in good faith for a certain period of time on the issues of explicit baptism of desire and related matters. But in terms of fundamental core teachings of the church, okay, such as whether atheists can be saved, someone who holds that is in heresy. But in his case, he's familiar with the dogmatic pronouncements on the issue. He's aware of Eugene the IV's statement and these other dogmatic statements. And he still holds that an atheist could make it. He's a formal heretic. So, Furthermore, you, you I, mentioned the I, Summa, I, by the way. Did you know that St. Thomas did not hold the Immaculate Conception? So does that mean he was a heretic? He was wrong. That, that was, was wrong. prior to the definition of the Immaculate Conception. Okay. But, however, he did hold the view of baptism of blood and desire for people who believed in the Trinity. Yes, you've already mentioned and, that. In your and, and you're saying that anyone outside of the Catholic faith, all of that... I, that's a dogma that anyone outside of the Catholic faith... Yes, that's a dogma. Do you believe that? Do you believe that dogma? Yes, of course. Oh, you, of course. Do you believe all the Jewish rabbis... No. Do, let me ask you a question. Do you, let me ask you a question. Do you believe all the Jewish rabbis... Do you believe all the Jewish rabbis on earth are in a state of mortal sin and on the road to damnation? Of course I do. You do? That's so. common sense. The, Okay, do you adhere to the Society of St. Pius X? Yes, I do. You do. Did you know that Archbishop Marshall Lefebvre taught that souls can be saved in Judaism, Buddhism, and Islam? I, I've, read, I've read the open letter to, to confuse Catholics. So is that a yes? This is the question. You, is the did question he teach that? Did he teach that Buddhists and Jews and Hindus can be saved? He taught the baptism of desire. He didn't That's not my question. Did he teach that Buddhists and Jews and Hindus can be saved? More specifically, what he taught he, that... My question, did he teach that Buddhists, Jews, and Hindus can be saved, yes or no? Through the Catholic Church, they can be saved. So someone can be saved in Judaism? No. I'm not Wait a second. That. You're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm saying that it... I'm saying that did it, Lefebvre I'm say that souls can be saved... For him. Listen, Michael. Did Lefebvre say that souls can be saved in Judaism? If he said that, he meant it... Under, under the very same... Oh, uh, okay. So you're rewriting his words, even yes. though he said it over and over again. He said that souls can so, be saved so, in so, another... So, See, this is why guys like you go to hell. Uh-huh. Because you're a liar. Because if you were honest, you would say, you would admit that you do believe that souls can be saved in Judaism, Buddhism, etc. Exactly I what Lefebvre said. Souls can be saved 
in yes, a, you do. In a false faith, no. Yes, you do. Okay. Well, you're telling me what I believe and what I think. Right, because you okay. adhere to the Society of St. Pius X's position. Stop dodging the question, please, and let me ask the question. St. Thomas and St. Alphonsus, adhering to the belief of baptism of blood and desire, you stated it is erroneous. You believe it is heresy. Are you saying that St. Thomas and St. Alphonsus were heretics? I'll explain it for you since you haven't watched yeah, the videos. Explain, please. It's it's very easy to explain. That someone uh, how can you both does it, how can you well, I be I immediately begin to explain and you interrupt me. Because you can't give a because the truth because the truth refutes what you're saying and you can't bear to hear it. But the idea of baptism of desire is incompatible with Catholic teaching. Someone can hold that false teaching for a certain period of time in regard to explicit baptism of desire until they've seen the overwhelming dogmatic evidence which contradicts it. Once they see that, then any version of the theory is absolutely heretical. But someone could hold explicit baptism of desire for a certain period of time without being a heretic. Just like someone could make a mistake on a finer point of theology. Just like St. So like Alphonsus held that the short form of consecration, this is my body, this is the chalice of my blood, is probably sufficient for a consecration, even though that's not a tenable position when you consider all of the evidence. If you look at what the Council of Florence taught, if you look at what Pope Leo XIII taught, and probably most of the independent traditionalists, or many of them, would reject what St. Alphonsus said on that matter. Okay? Of course they would. The question is... Okay, so there you go. Was who? No, he wasn't. It was not a formal heretic. So, so how, how can you say that Archbishop Lefebvre was a formal heretic? For two reasons. Number one, they didn't believe the same thing. Lefebvre held that souls can be saved without even believing in Christ. He held souls could be saved in Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam. St. Alphonsus would have condemned that idea. He didn't hold that idea. Okay? St. Alphonsus held... Thomas Aquinas would have condemned that idea as well. He said, you must believe in the Trinity in the Incarnation. He specifically rejected the idea that anyone ignorant of the Gospel can be saved. They were of two what different religions. Infinite mercy. Infinite mercy, infinite mercy, infinite mercy has nothing yes. to do with what we're talking about. That, that the power of God is omnipotent and can send, if necessary, even an angel. Wait a second. This is how people spread errors. When you say infinite mercy, you have to clearly define what your point is. Are you trying to say that infinite mercy allows people to be saved without faith in the Trinity? Is that your point? No. I'm saying that What's your point? mercy will bring a person to faith, even if in their dying moment. And that's something that you can't know. You can't know. You can't know the, the omnipotence of God. Well, first of all, you're denying, you're denying that this is even a plausible. What what you're saying? For denying the omnipotence. What of God. you're saying is completely irrelevant. First of all, it's completely irrelevant because we're not talking about people. Michael, listen. What we're talking about is completely different from what you're saying. You're saying that people can convert. Well, David White and Lefebvre believed that people who don't convert can be saved. So how can you say that they didn't convert? You can't say that. You don't know that. I didn't even talk about that. I haven't even addressed yeah. it. This is an example of your straw man argumentation. I didn't even mention no, that. I'm saying, are they formal heretics? Yes, absolutely. Lefebvre was, was, was a formal heretic. And see, you're asking me, did he die a formal heretic? See, that's a different issue. You, you can't even oh, okay. clearly specify the matters you're talking about because you're in a fog. One issue is whether someone's a heretic currently. Another issue is whether they die a heretic. Do you know the difference? Yes, of course. I okay, do. then why are you confusing the two? The why are you, the, the why are you confusing the two issues? So you admit that you don't know that Archbishop Lefebvre died a formal heretic? Well, you don't know that. For, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to address that issue yet. Whether he died a heretic, this is how the church handles that. The church goes by the external forum. And so if someone was a heretic, and we know Lefebvre was a heretic, there's clear evidence of that. Unless there's evidence in the external forum that he changed his course, that he converted, he is presumed to have died as he lived. So he is considered to have died a heretic. We know for a fact that he was a heretic based on what he repeatedly said, which is incompatible with Catholic teaching. Souls can be saved in any religion. He believed souls can be saved in every religion. Okay, that is heresy. He was a heretic, and there's no evidence that he converted. No, I, I don't believe. I believe that he follows the view of St. Thomas Aquinas. No, he didn't. Saint, Michael, Michael. Yes. It's a mortal sin to bear false witness. 
St. Thomas held St. Thomas held that you had to believe in the Trinity and the Incarnation. He didn't hold. He did. Yes, he did. He spoke about people living in the woods who had never even heard of God. He said that if God's the infinite mercy could send them an angel so that they might recognize the truth. Let me read. Let me read to you what he said. Here's what he said. Michael, here's what he said. Here's what he said. Here's what he said. If someone was brought up in the wilds or among wolves, such a man cannot know explicitly anything about the faith. St. Thomas replies, It is the characteristic of divine providence to provide every man with what is necessary for salvation. Provided on his part there is no hindrance. In the case of a man who seeks good and shuns evil, God would either reveal to him through internal inspiration what had to be believed or would send some preacher to him. And in another place, two other places, he says, After grace has been revealed, all people, both the learned and simple folk, are bound to explicit faith in the mysteries of Christ, such as the Incarnation and, in another quote, he says, the Trinity. He held all people must know the Trinity and the Incarnation. That's in the Summa as well. That's his, that's his position. He did not hold what you're saying. Was his position erroneous? On that point? Why would it be erroneous? He's saying well, that you have to believe in the Trinity and the Incarnation. And here's the contradiction. In, you, in order to be safe through invincible ignorance. No. In order to be saved through baptism of desire, you have to believe in the Trinity. Are you saying that that's, that's what St. Thomas Aquinas said, right? Are you saying that that's an error? You're confusing two issues. There's, there's no, two, there are two presumption, issues here. Your presumption Michael, that St. Thomas Aquinas died a heretic, and that's you're just such a dishonest person. Arrogant. You're just such a no, dishonest no. person. There are two issues. Are, are you capable of distinguishing? There's one issue. Can someone be saved without faith in the Trinity? One issue. There's another issue. No. Does someone need baptism? Two issues. Do you, do you know how they're different issues? Can you understand that? Is that yeah, too hard for you? I understand that. Okay, so why are you dishonestly confusing them? I'm not dishonest. Yes, you are, because you just you did. Saint did St. Right? Thomas hold that you have to believe in the Trinity in the Incarnation? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Did Lefebvre? Yes, he did. No, he didn't lie. Mortal sin. You break the commandment when you say that, because I've given you evidence that tells you it's false. It. You break the commandment. You commit mortal sin by saying that. He said over and over again, open letter to confused Catholics, page 73, against the heresies, pages, twisting his words. I'll read them word for word. He's saying that no one is saved outside of the Catholic Church. They're saved inside the Catholic Church. Michael, everyone says they believe that. It's not... Listen, it's not whether you say, it's how you define that. It's what you mean by that. Everyone claims to believe in no salvation outside the church. It's whether you deny the meaning of that in your explanation. That's the point. You have a different meaning, that's all. Right. I have the church's meaning. I have the church's meaning. You have a modernist... what about... Uh, what about uh, what about Pope Pius the Ninth? We have a whole section on it. What about yeah? He said it's not a sin, invincible ignorance. He, he no, you don't, again, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't, okay? Singulari quadem. He says that those who are in the state of invincible ignorance are not held guilty in this matter in the eyes of the Lord. That's ca- Catholic teaching that the people who are ignorant of the gospel are not damned for their ignorance. They're damned for their other mortal sins, their dishonesty, their lack of charity, etc. So again, so you don't know what you're talking about. Here's the, here's, the, here's the real question I have is that... But let me just... No, wait a second. Wait a second. You're diverting. Here's what Lefebvre says. You said I'm twisting his words. Here's a direct quote. Quote, Souls can be saved in a religion other than the Catholic religion. Protestantism, Islam, Buddhism, etc. This is Who's twisting exactly his words? What What's that? This is exactly this is this is what has happened to this to this conversation. Quoting Lefebvre. I mentioned I, I, I mentioned Saint Thomas Aquinas, and obviously I have some issues with your interpretation and comments regarding the Summa Theologica. And what what exactly do you have an issue with? I have an issue with you saying that this is his erroneous uh, him uh, interpretation of baptism of blood. And did desire. Saint Thomas did Saint Thomas contradict the Immaculate Conception? In the Summa? That I don't... Yes, he did. He did. Okay, but the, the, the Immacul- as you stated, the Immaculate... Okay, okay, so the Summa is not infallible, is it? I'm not saying that. What I'm uh, saying then is... Then what's that, your point? 
my point is, is that are you saying that St. Thomas Aquinas was an error? Is this heresy? He was definitely an error on, on baptism of desire. I already answered this question. You just asked the same question that's already been answered. I said someone, let me explain it to you again in case it doesn't register. Someone can be an error on explicit baptism of desire for a certain period of time until they see all the dogmatic evidence which contradicts it. After that time, to hold any version of the theory is heresy because you're denying a mountain of dogmatic evidence which shows that you absolutely need water baptism. Okay, the other theory, the, the other position of Lefebvre and your position that you don't need faith in the Trinity, that souls can be saved in non-Catholic religions, that is blatant heresy. That is your position. You are a total liar. So you reject what Lefebvre says when Lefebvre says souls can be saved in a religion other than the Catholic religion. Is that heresy? I would like to believe, I would like to believe that when, when Archbishop Lefebvre said that, he was, used, he was using what he, from St. Thomas Aquinas Summa Theologica regarding... You're just a pure liar. Just a pure liar. That's why people like you... I mean, here's another quote to disprove you. Father Schmidtberger, Time Bombs of the Second Vatican Council, page 10. It is clear that the followers of other religions can be saved under certain conditions. Yeah, if they convert. No, he doesn't say that. He de- Michael, do you know of anyone... Michael, Just because I'm an adherent to the, the movement of Archbishop Lefebvre doesn't mean that I agree with every single thing that every single one of the superiors... No, that's, Michael, again, you're switching issues. Is it heresy? He, you said, it, you said if, it, if they convert. Does he say anything about if they convert here? No. Does anyone deny in the traditional movement that people can convert? I've never met anyone who claims to be a traditionalist who holds you can't convert. I'm, have you let me ask you this Michael, I'm have you Michael, have you ever met sure. Michael, have you ever met anyone in the traditional movement who holds that you cannot convert to Catholicism? No. Okay. So his statement it is clear that the followers of other religions can be saved. Is he talking about people who convert? No, he's not because everyone knows you can be saved if you convert. Obviously, and he doesn't mention anything about converting. He's saying people who don't convert. For you to deny that is just a lie. He's, I'm not denying that. Yes, you're saying that what he means here. <laughs> Michael, you've got to be honest here. He's saying I'm not it is clear that the followers of other religions can be saved. Of course they can. He, n- no, they can't. You can only They're be saved in... Forever? They're condemned forever? Uh, even if they convert? That's the question. No, he doesn't say that if they convert. He's talking about people who don't convert. In your interpretation of it, yes, it's heresy. Where does he say, where does he say that they convert? He doesn't say that. Okay, exactly. It's does implied. Lefebvre say that they convert? It's implied. Oh, it's implied. No, it isn't. He doesn't say it anywhere. But Nowhere. The of the heart, yes, it's implied. No. And actually, Bishop Fillet also said, here's another quote, Fillet, Consider a Hindu in Tibet who has no knowledge of the Catholic Church. He lives according to his conscience and to the laws which God has put into his heart. He can be in the state of grace. There you go. So he's saying someone can be in the state of grace, a Hindu, who has no knowledge of the Catholic Church, who's a Hindu, doesn't believe in Christ. Here's, here's, here's the hardest, is that heresy? The M- Michael, is that heresy? That is heresy. Is he a formal heretic? Yes, he is. And, and you know this how? How? Where is the evidence that the you, evidence you is that you told for a fact that he knows that this is heresy, that a person can be saved in a false faith, that he well, knows for a fact that it is heresy, and that he now willingly and now now knowingly denies that. How can you prove? What evidence can you provide to prove to, to prove this? That's the question. I can provide. How can, you, how, can you pr- how can you prove that you know what Bishop Fillet thinks? That's okay. What I yeah. I, how can you prove? I'd be happy how to answer it if you would let me. You can't prove you know what. Yes, I can. Think. Yeah. Yes. Because. <laughs> wow. Say, first that of all, can, can you let me answer? Can you let me answer, please? Sure. Okay. Sure. Saint Robert Bellarmine, on this very topic, addressing how you determine whether someone is a heretic, says, "For men are not bound or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic by his external works." They judge him to be a heretic and condemn him to be a heretic. So what he's thinking is, one, irrelevant, because what he's saying and doing is what's relevant. The church goes by the external form, 
Okay, so that's the first principle you don't understand and which you deny. Secondly, there's a mountain of evidence against fillet, not only on the salvation of issue, but also on the issue of heresy, the church, uh, Benedict the Sixteenth, the Novus Ordo quote bishops. He's a heretic in all kinds of ways. In regard to this statement, he's aware of the dogmatic pronouncements on outside the church. There's no salvation. They've been published in his magazines. He's familiar with them. Yet he still contradicts that by teaching that a pagan can be in the state of grace and saved. That's heresy. And furthermore, let me finish the answer, that you said in one of your emails that if they think what they're saying is Catholic teaching, then they can't be heretics. Again, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay? It doesn't matter what... what he does believe that he's truly upholding all the dogmas. It doesn't matter. If you're aware... Him a formal heretic still? If he he's... still be a formal heretic? He would be if... He's aware of what the Church teaches, and he protests against it or contradicts it. Let me give you an example. Pius IX in his encyclical Gravis Ac Diturnae on the Old Catholics, he says, They repeatedly state openly that they do not in the least reject the Catholic Church and its visible head, but rather that they are zealous for the purity of Catholic doctrine. He's pointing out that the Old Catholics claim to be zealous for Catholic teaching, yet in the same document he calls them wicked heretics. So whether someone thinks what they're doing is Catholic teaching does not matter if it's a clear issue and they're clearly opposing a defined Catholic teaching. Uh, Not a finer point of theology, but a basic issue such as whether atheists can be saved, Hindus. When was the the first uh, uh, expression or dogmatic definition on uh, faith outside... Twelve fifteen, Fourth Lateran Council, Innocent the Third. And that was before the Summa Theologica. The, yes, it was. Summa Theologica was so how, how, end how of the. How is it the, that Saint Thomas Aquinas? You can give him a pass, knowing he would have known this. But but he said that baptism of blood and the fire ex- for those. He he said it. He he he, he gave. Uh, what, what you could call I, I understand your question. I understand your question. The answer is that he held that those individuals could be in the church if they believed in the Trinity and the Incarnation, and that was not formal heresy until you see the dogmatic pronouncements which show that you cannot ever be in the church without water baptism. So St. Thomas Aquinas would have held the belief that, for instance, even though the Protestant Reformation hadn't had yet happened, Protestants, he held that view, that Protestants, they, because they believe in the Trinity, that they could be saved through baptism of desire. Well, again, that's a completely unwarranted conclusion, because a Protestant, for instance, someone who holds that faith is all you need for justification, that your actions don't impact whether you will retain the state of grace, that's a, another heresy in itself. Someone who holds that well, heresy. Sure, but they believe in the Trinity. And that was it doesn't matter. If you, the, he wasn't saying that as long as you believe in the Trinity. Was, yeah. Can I finish? Can I finish, please? Can I finish? Can I finish? He wasn't saying that if you believe in the Trinity, it doesn't matter what else you believe. Do you see how logical your conclusion is? He wasn't saying that, okay, believe in the Trinity, you're saved no matter what else you believe. No, he's no, saying that, he's saying that if it's you, not necessary to believe in all dogmas of the Catholic faith. The Trinity is it's not necessary to have a positive knowledge of all Catholic teaching. And we would still hold that, that the only absolutely necessary mysteries of faith, for instance, if you were converting a native, okay, the only thing he would positively have to know would be the Trinity, the Incarnation, some of the basics of the Apostles' Creed. And what if and, ba- and receive baptism? What if he what if he unknowingly denied some some dogma regarding uh, re- reincarnation, for example? What if he willingly denied some dogma that, that he didn't know? It depends on what the it depends on what the issue is. If if he f- falls into he wouldn't a, be a formal heresy. It depends. It depends on what he's believing. For instance, if he believes that there are three gods then he's a formal heretic. If he doesn't understand that grace is conferred by the work that has been worked in the sacraments, well, then he's not necessarily a formal heretic. Or if he thinks 
if he has a, an error on sacramental theology or a finer point of Christ, then he could be erring in good faith. For example, if he doesn't understand how, that Christ has two wills, okay, until he sees a dogmatic pronouncement, he could be erring in good faith, possibly. But if it reaches a level where it corrupts his basic faith in Jesus Christ as true God and true man, then it's a heresy which corrupts his essential mystery of faith. So, yes or no, basically, what do you, do you believe that uh, St. Thomas Aquinas would know? See, this is what you're going to be saying. That, that's why that that's why that error that error that was condemned in the Jansenists. Let me answer. That's why that error that was condemned in the Jansenist errors. When anyone finds a doctrine established in Augustine, he can clearly hold it and teach it, disregarding any bull of the Pope. That's why it's so important because there were many errors that fathers of the Church made, that saints made. It doesn't. If you find a, a proposition in their teaching. You can't just say, I'm going to hold it, no matter what. No, you no, have I'm to weigh everything believe, by the teaching of the church. That he was a formal heretic. That's How many times are you going to ask me the same question? I've answered that three times at least. I've already answered how that. Is it, how, is it, how is it possible that this had already been a defined dogma, outside of the church there is no salvation? And, uh, he was just wrong. Thomas, he was just he flat out wrong. And he did not hold... and. Michael, he did not hold that. He did not hold that. What Lefebvre held, two different religions. Lefebvre held universal salvation. In the sense of yes, he did. In the sense of you can be saved in any religion, and he couldn't say for sure that anyone's excluded. That was his position. And that's the position of most of the traditional priests. Michael, the Catholic Church. Michael, the Catholic Church. Michael, the Catholic Church doesn't teach that people can be saved in other religions, but by the Catholic Church. It teaches that you can't be saved in another religion. So what he's saying is directly contrary to the teaching of the Catholic Church. And then for you to say that he's not saying that souls can be saved in other religions is just such a lie. It's abominable. Have you seen Father Dennis Fahey's statement? He where he says that a Jew who rejects Christ can be in a state of grace, can have the supernatural life which God wants to see in every soul. Have you seen that quote? You know, this is, this is ridiculous. I, 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 you've done everything that you can do to avoid expressing what you really believe. Avoid expressing what I really believe? I've answered your question yeah. three times. What are you talking about? You, you claim that St. Thomas Aquinas held an error, an error which had already been defined as a dogma. And you're saying that you don't believe he was a heretic. Meanwhile, me, someone who doesn't believe that I'm a heretic, that I'm not denying any dogma of the faith, you claim that I'm a heretic. You're definitely a heretic. Now, you're, you're as sure as there is a God in heaven, you're a heretic. This, Absolutely. This is a theological opinion and not a No, it's a certitude. 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 And you're also, you're also a complete liar. Complete liar. You're just a condemner. You just want to condemn no, people. So you I don't. Proud. I don't. But with That's evil people... Yeah. Okay, Obvious. it's it's necessary. Evil, Evil people, people like you. Condemn. That's right. And you think Benedict XVI is a Catholic, right? That, I think Benedict XVI has a lot of material heresies. Material heresies. Oh. Uh, yes. I'm what would be a formal heresy according to you? What what would he have to do to be a formal heretic? Well, why don't you why don't you go hold an interview with Benedict XVI? Tell him. No, I'm I'm saying the, theoretically, theoretically, is there anything he could do to become a formal heretic in your view? You would have to present evidence that he is a formal no. heretic. Okay, I'll give it. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. It's a Catholic dogma, and that he denies it. All right, I'll give it to you. If he denies, if he denies your opinion on Catholic dogma and says no, I don't believe that's what the Church teaches. Then he's, he's, he's obviously, you, you, you have no evidence of formal heresy. Yes, I do. I'll, I'll give you the evidence. I'll give you the evidence. Has he said that he, he, said that he denies, explicitly denies a, a Catholic dogma? Which Catholic dogma has he explicitly said that he denies? Well, he, if you put it that way, he admitted that the teaching he adheres to on religious liberty is contrary to the teaching of Catholic tradition. In his book, Principles of Catholic Theology, he admits that Vatican II's teaching on religious liberty is a counter syllabus of Pius IX. So he admits it contradicts the teaching of Pius IX on religious liberty. And he holds to that view. Yes, he does. And it's actually the official teaching of your sect. 
because it's taught in Vatican II, which is binding, if he's Pope. And another dogma he denies, I mean, there are many. Uh, Vatican II is not binding. Either. Not binding. That's, that's, no, it's not binding. Oh, boy. What is binding, what is, binding is dogmatic definition. Defined did you know that Paul the Six? Did you know that Paul the Six in Ecclesium Suum, the man who promulgated Vatican II, admitted that it dealt with the dogmatic teaching of the Church? No, he did not. He admitted that it defined he he, the teaching of the Church. That's right. He said he, that it did not define any dogma. No, he, he, Vatican II does not say that. That's a myth. We had a whole debate on this. You should listen to it. You'd learn something. Rather than hearing the lies of the Society of St. Pius X on the issue, the idea that Vatican II was not binding is just completely untrue. If Paul VI is Pope, it was absolutely dogmatic. He closed every document. I think, I think, I think you have a heretical understanding of the, of the, of the, of the Constitution on, on papal infallibility. This, this, is, this is insane. What's you can't insane? Say that. You can't you can't say that uh, dogmatic definitions and everything in Vatican II are infallible. It's, it's insane. You're, you're completely anti-traditional. You, you go to the far extreme, and it's out there. What you're now saying is that if, if these popes were valid popes, then we have to accept Vatican II, and that's not true. The Church does not say anything ever even close to that in, in the definitions on infall infallibility. That's not what's being stated. Vatican II never claimed to be infallible. Your whole understanding of this is, is... You don't have any idea what you're talking about, Michael. None. I could give you the facts here if you're willing to listen. Did you know that every... Sure, did you know that every document of Vatican II ends with solemn language? Ends with, with what? Solemn language? With solemn language, yes. He says... Well, that congratulations. We, right. And it's an ecumenical council. It purports to be. Here's the language. Each and every one of the things set forth in this decree, we too, by the apostolic authority conferred on us by Christ, join with the Venerable Fathers in approving, decreeing, and establishing these things. So it, they deal with faith or morals. That's a fact. He approves them by his apostolic authority, and he claims to be the Pope, and he signs the documents. That fulfills all of the requirements for infallibility, that he must act as pastor and teacher of all Christians. Yes, let me, do, you, do you believe the Council of Nicaea? Do you believe the Council of Nicaea is infallible? Why? Do you know who the Pope? Do you, do you know who the Pope during the Council of Nicaea was? Who was the Pope during the Council? You obviously don't. Pope Saint Sylvester. Did he issue a bull approving the Council? What was the? What is? What, what is your point? You don't know the answer. He issued no bull approving Nicaea. Do you know? Do you know why Nicaea is considered dogmatic and was considered dogmatic from the beginning? Why is it considered dogmatic? Because his legates approved it, and it dealt with faith or morals, and it was in a setting of an ecumenical council. That was what all that was. Council? What about the Council of Pistoia? That was a robber synod it's condemned by Pope Pius VI in Octorum Fidei. What's so your point? Been, so there has been con condemned councils before. But the point is, you regard Paul VI as a pope, and if he's pope, he approved Vatican II in a fashion that's far more solemn than the way previous popes approved ecumenical councils. And actually, we have all kinds of quotes from your anti-popes saying that Vatican II is binding. And in fact, they never said that it was. It was they was stated over and over again that it was merely pastoral, and that it was not a dogmatic council. Furthermore, said of the Catechism is a theological opinion and not a third to you, you, you Because I, don't, I, I accept him as a pope, I'm not a condemned heretic and going to hell forever. As you, you would like to no, you, do, you don't accept him as the pope, because if you did, you would be under him. You, you wouldn't be going to an independent church that's out of communion with the bishops he... he I don't believe that. I simply don't believe that they're out of control. No, to, Michael, to operate independently of the bishops you regard as legitimate for an extended period of time is schismatic. As Saint no, I don't believe that. Yes, it is. St. Jerome points out... Problem. Yes, it is. St. Jerome points out, okay, that schism separates from the church on account of disagreement with the bishop. And so you regard That's these guys as problem. bishops... But that, that is perfectly consistent with Catholic teaching on schism. 
what you also reject his quote canonizations. Just Father Peter Scott wrote an article dissenting from the quote canonization of Jose Maria Escriva. Saint Alphonsus himself points out to suppose that the church can err in canonizing is a sin or is heresy. Society Pius Tenth teaches that. Not infallible either. Okay, uh, but to dissent from the saints, the church Talking recognizes. About dogma here, please. This, can, can we can we stick with dogma and not opinions of all? You dissent from dogma. I I've given you dogma. Yes. I've never dissented from dogma. Yes, dogma you you I believe heard. souls can be saved in non-Catholic religions. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I do not. I believe that all the body of if, if if you were honest when you said that, you would condemn Lefebvre's statement that souls can be saved in non-Catholic religions. I condemn the malinterpretation of Lefebvre's statement. Of course I do. There's no malinterpretation except for on your part. Oh. The malinterpretation is to say that I believe that what he was saying was that it, this, this is pointless. We've already talked about this enough. We simply don't agree. Do you believe I'm a condemned heretic, and I believe that I'm not denying a single... Here, here's another quote for you. Here's another quote for you. Benedict XVI, It is likewise impossible to decide in favor of Trent and Vatican I, but against Vatican II. Whoever denies Vatican II denies the authority that upholds the other two councils, and thereby detaches them from their foundation. So your own, quote, anti-pope, saying that Vatican II is binding just as Vatican I and Trent. You deny the omnipotence of God. Wait, so you can't answer the fact, you just switch the subject. Of course. Right. Because I'm tired of going through this. Because you can't handle any facts. I don't believe you can have the faith. Michael, Michael, I'm giving you facts here. You're running from... I don't even believe that that, that you believe in any of this. Oh, really? Why do you think that? What I'm really saying. Because this is insane. You're just attacking every single other tradition. I just gave you a quote. Because everyone condemned and going to hell. Everything you're doing is completely counterproductive. No, you're just you're just dismissing all of the facts I'm giving you're run, you. You're, run, you're running everyone. Well, you can say anything. You don't even believe in God. You don't. You just the very first article, the omnipotence of God. You deny it. How's that? that Specifically explain how I deny that. You did, you, you you call Saint Thomas's. St. Thomas Aquinas' opinion Same on the symptom of desire an error. That's and right. All St. Thomas Aquinas said was that God could, in his infinite mercy, send an angel to someone that they may convert. You're denying that. You're mm-hmm. denying the That wasn't an error. I didn't say that was an error. What I said was, in fact, I've quoted it. You've totally that misrepresented the facts. That's material heresy. To, material the, heresy error, the error that St. Thomas promoted was in regard to I, baptism I, of I, desire. I, the error was in regard I, to baptism of desire, not in regard to the necessity of believing in the Trinity and God being able to bring someone miraculously to the faith. In fact, there have been many miraculous baptisms. If you had any clue what you were talking about, you would realize that we talk about miraculous can you, baptisms. Can you accept the fact that baptism of desire through infinite... Let me ask you this. Does the church... It, let me ask you this. Do people who believe... Do, do people who receive a baptism of desire, are they born again of water and the Spirit? You know, I, I don't have to answer. You can't answer it. You can't answer any questions. Because any question you answer just shows what a liar you are. And that's it. You can't answer a question. What? That's just a lie. You bear false witness when you say that. Bear false witness. Mortal sin. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. No, it's it's just a lie. Yeah. It's my opinion. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why is Nicaea infallible? And not Vatican too? Vatican II is not infallible. Why? It's merely pastoral. Because Vatican II Benic is not claimed infallibility. Benic XVI never si- claimed infallibility. Nicaea never claimed infallibility. Come on, really? It never used the words, this is infallible. <laughs> really, it didn't. Really. They were they were obviously defining dogma. They were defending they were defending dogma. Paul VI in Ecclesium Suum says that Vatican II has the task of dealing with the doctrine of the church and of defining it. That's not true. It That's not true. Okay, so another what, what fact. Dogma did it what dogma did well, first of all, he's an anti-pope. But what I'm telling you is, from your standpoint, if he were a pope, the teaching on religious liberty would be infallible. The teaching on non-Christian religions would be infallible. The teaching on the church would be infallible. The teaching on various aspects of faith or morals would be infallible. And Vatican II has a lot... He didn't say it. It was not infallible. 
anyways, this yeah. conversation. Well, I gotta get off. Here. I've been on the phone long enough. The facts. Silly, and, the and, facts. And I still believe that you are an error. Y- you're. If I'm an error. Steve, you're an error. Let's just leave it at that. No, you're 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 a heretic for a number of reasons. Number one, you regard pro-abortion pu- public figures as Catholic, correct? Who? No. Nancy Pelosi. Okay, by what authority? By what authority do you say they're not Catholic? I have no idea as far as judging them. Okay, so, so is is Nancy Pelosi a Catholic? Is you want me to answer if Nancy Pelosi is a Catholic? I don't know if she's converted in the last twenty four hours. I don't that, mind. That, that that that's an example of your heresy. The church, if if the church if the church adopted if the church adopted your way of doing things. Then you'd never have a, an external unity, because you would. The difference is that I'm not authority in the church. No, no. Catholics have an obligation. Catholics have an obligation to declare as outside the church or hold as outside the church people who dissent from the church's teaching. That's the I obligation of a Catholic. I don't know if the last it doesn't matter. The church goes by the. Ex- listen, the ch- listen. The church. I don't know. I don't claim to read. So then, so. No, the church goes by the external forum. That's why your position is so heretical. It would make a mockery of church unity, because then you'd have to consider people who don't believe in the church's teaching in the church. The most outlandish statement that is, um, of all your ideas is that you believe that you can judge people clearly by believing that you know what they think, and you don't. Well, that, I have to get off here. I have to end this phone call. Now. Right, because fact, you're just, don't read mine. you're just a liar. You just lie all the time.